Hello, hello, hello. My name is Charles, and I want to welcome you to the God Principles. You know, as I promised my audience that I was going to start branching off into different forms of content, this is going to be about men's health, a topic we very rarely talk about. It's always on men's mind. It's about sexual dysfunction. What are you going to do? when you cannot perform sexually with one of these beautiful Filipinas. We're going to have that discussion. My name is Charles. And this topic, men, is always on the back of men's mind. What are you going to do when that day may come when you can no longer sexually perform? What are you going to do? I saw a, a video of a female doctor. She was talking about your options. And I said to myself, why don't you have someone who's actually had some experience? So that's what I, this is going to be. It's going to show you how I came across this information, my experience, and what I've discovered, and what I'm doing now. Prior to COVID, I had a doctor's checkup just to make sure that, you know, my blood pressure is right and they do blood work and all that stuff. And everything was fine. Then COVID hit and we were confined to our homes. We couldn't get outside, anything like that. And I started to feel my body wasn't right. Realized when I first got my first checkup, I was in really good health. I was going to the gym. COVID hit. I couldn't go to the gym. We weren't getting outside as much. And when I started a, a job during COVID and I had to get out more, I found that I wasn't feeling right. My legs were bothering me too much. I thought it was because I hadn't been exercising. But after I'd been at work for a while, I should not have had these problems. It was difficult for me to walk from the parking lot to the elevator without hurting, without losing my breath. And so I decided to go to the doctor. Now, I went to my HMO. This is one thing. The HMO, they, the ones that I was using in Milwaukee, you would go to see a registered nurse. You had to request to see a real live doctor. When I first went, the first time, the place I was going to, I actually got to see a doctor. This time, I'm seeing an RN. They run these tests. They don't find anything unusual. So, I think they may have prescribed some high blood pressure meds, which I got off of eventually doing natural ways of controlling my blood pressure, but I still didn't feel right. So I started doing some research on the internet about my symptoms. And it seemed to indicate that I was having a testosterone issues. And I realized I hadn't run into no erectile dysfunction issues. As a matter of fact, I had a 27-year-old girlfriend, and she was perfectly satisfied. So was I. So thinking of erectile dysfunction and testosterone issues, I would think that that's where it would show up. It didn't. So I said, well, wait a minute. Let me go ahead and check out getting a testosterone test from an outside source. But I also, you know, I carry a lot of weight and I said, wait a minute, you know, my weight issues and things like that. So I went to a clinic that was a weight loss clinic and an ED clinic, thinking, okay, I can kill two birds with one stone. Before they do anything, they do a blood test. I am so glad that I paid the money to get that Second opinion. That's why I'm bringing this up. You go to them HMOs, 
these are some tests that they're not going to do. They're not going to do them. So when they got the test back, they found out that my testosterone level was at 100. If it had kept going down, I would have died. This is during COVID. But also, let me backtrack. When I went to the my regular HMO doctor, they also found out I was vitamin D deficient. And the lady showed up that people that were vitamin D deficient and took that COVID shot, they actually had issues and some of them actually died. But I digress. So now they're saying your testosterone levels are too low. And that's causing me problems with my muscles, my breathing, and it's also causing weight gain. Because when the testosterone gets too low, the estrogen in men go up, and then you start to put on weight. So now I've got the diagnosis, but what I found out while I was there was even more disturbing. I'm sitting in the doctor's office in the waiting area, and I notice all these young men come in here. I mean, 30s, 40s, 50s. Realize I'm 70 years old of age and I'm still sexually functioning. These young men are not. They're coming in having to get testosterone treatment and there's another treatment after that which I'm going to tell you about in order to stay sexually active in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. My discussion with the doctor, he said this. He said that the environment in America is really toxic. We found out that plastic toxicity are leaking into the water system from the plastic bottles. If you look at the water bottles, they now have this here classification that said it doesn't carry, contain EDA or something. And I also discovered that those cans, that we use canned goods, if you look on the inside of the can, there is a lining on the inside of it. That's plastic. And if you're putting cans of, over your stove and it gets too warm, the plastic leaches into the food. These are things I personally discovered. So anyway, they started me on testosterone treatment. You have to go in regularly to check your blood because it, it's going to increase testosterone. But if it gets too high, you have to have them take some blood from you to reduce it. So you constantly monitored doing the testosterone treatment. However, I'm coming to the Philippines now. Realize this is before I even came here. I'm not really having any ED problems. However, I didn't want to have no problems when I came here. So I got the Viagras. I took them, but I didn't need them. I'll tell you about that later. But the other part was and as we age, we start to be concerned about our size. And so I talked to the doctor about it. I said, well, what do you do about that? Because there's a whole protocol for men to stay sexually active well into your 80s or 90s if you start the protocol. So now the protocol what I found was I started taking penile shots. Sounds painful, it's not. They have these uh, shot injectors that they use for diabetes. You know what, you put it in and it, it's so fast, you don't even feel it. I was doing it with my dad, so I was real familiar with it. And the reason that you do that is because 
our blood vessels start to build up with plaque. Same thing that causes heart attacks. That happens all throughout your body, including in your erectile. Taking the shots cleared out the blood vessels. And it also brought back it to normal size. As a matter of fact, in some ways, it might even been bigger. I'm <laughs> just keeping it real with you. But we don't have to be concerned about not being able to perform with these younger women because I have heard them say that the younger men can no longer perform. I mean, in the African-American community, smoking them blunts and everything else is making them less effective in the bedroom. And that's not my opinion. I've heard these young girls tell me that. And they're really satisfied with older men, especially those that are getting the injections. And this is a this is what I've learned from a lot of different people. So when you come to the Philippines, you can start these protocols in the states because here comes the problem you can start them in the states but you can't bring those medications over here they told me that i would have to find a doctor for this type of treatment here in the philippines as a matter of fact he said it's cheaper here but in the meantime what have i had to do since i've been here the LDR that I met, she was 32. We had no problems um, in the bedroom. However, there's some things in this food system that can cause you problems. If you come over here and start eating that diet that they eat here, you could have some diabetic issues which could rob you of your sexual function or make it difficult. Also, I have to pay attention to my vitamin intake. I take potassium. Potassium is a water-soluble vitamin. And because you have to drink a lot of water in this heat, you also have to take potassium. It's very important. Potassium is the chemical that allows your body to transmit the electrical signals to your heart. If your potassium level goes too low, you could have a heart attack and die. And I actually know people in the States that have had that issue because as I've told you in my previous one, I'm going to go more in depth into my background. I know people that were drug addicts that ended up in the hospital because their potassium levels were too low. And it came from the drug addiction and the amount of drugs and the things that your body does when it's on drugs. So I happen to know that this is a fact and that you could just drop dead because your potassium levels are too low because that's what transmits, transmits the electrical signals to your heart. Next, supplements. There are supplements, and I'm going to put some in the, uh, I'm going to have some links in the description about some supplements that I found that helped me. Then you can order them online. These are going to be affiliate links. I'm going to be perfectly upfront about them, but I will tell you they do work. That's what I wanted to share. Elect uh, ED, you do not have to be concerned about it. A lot of Filipinas, they don't realize, they figure that when a man gets too up in age, they're not going to be able to sexually perform. But if you've taken care of your health like I have, that's not an issue. Click like and click share. Comment. If you got any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. 
And I'm continue to go down this path about men's health, relationships, and money-making opportunities. My name is Charles, and this is The Guide Principles.